Welcome back to practice paper 7. We're all looking forward to doing this one. So again, it's the usual format. I'll just go through the paper and we'll see what way the cookie crumbles. So it's paper 7. It says many countries see global warming as a major threat. Well, there's two gases. One is CO2 and then is CH4 and methane. So some countries see nuclear power stations as a solution to their energy needs, which doesn't cause further global warming. Explain why? Well, there's no CO2, again, no CO2 produced to cause global warming. So two marks, two sentences. CO2 produces the global warming. Nuclear doesn't produce it, sort of, for example. State the main environmental disadvantage. Two marks, so the, the nuclear waste is the problem. That's the disadvantage. Nuclear waste. Difficult to handle and store. And then to date, no means of disposal. So that's the problem with that one. So let's go on to the next one. Uranium again, I told you to learn the formula. I'm not I'll tell you any more. So uranium is used in the fuel in most nuclear power stations. This is fission. How does the amount of uranium needed compare with the amount of coal or oil needed? Much less. Much less fuel needed. All the power stations, when they come to the end of their useful life, have to be decommissioned. What does this mean? So it's taken apart. It's taken apart and the parts safely um, decontaminate, decontaminated and stored. Again, that doesn't happen. Maybe with the year 2050 they'll be able to do something. Is much longer than they thought it would do. State one problem with decommissioning nuclear parts compared with other nuclear probably is cost of disposal of nuclear waste. It's also a hazardous material, so there's loads of different things for that one mark. So that's the first page done. So let's go on to this. Using wind energy. In the form of wind turbines for generating electricity is never likely to be a solution for energy needs. No, again, there's only one mark. Not always windy. So, reliability. Reliability issue. Many view wind farms as an eyesore in the landscape. Step one, other environmental disadvantages that they have. Well, there is some noise, and that's about it. Some people say it affects birds and stuff, but there is actually no proof of that. And the noise that comes from them is very little. Let's go on to question two. State how the weight of an object is calculated when its mass is known as so state. Weight is the mass. in kilos multiplied by g 10 meters per second squared state so it'll be equal to same g might do but better put it in words a car is pulled forward and begun to move along a road in the direction shown below so it's moving to the right 
After a few seconds, the car is moving at a constant speed, so a constant speed and the forces are balanced. Label clearly the two horizontal forces acting on the car. So it's the force pulling it is the force of the engine. Force of engine. And the other one would be the drag. And they're equal and opposite because they're balanced. So it's the drag. And the drag is friction and air resistance and road noise or road car resistance. What can you say about the size of these two forces? So in balance, so that's Newton's first law. Newton's first law. The body remains at rest or a state of uniform motion in this angle pulled by an external force. So Newton's first law, that would be balanced. The car then accelerates forward along the horizontal load takes three seconds to increase its speed from two to twenty. Calculate the acceleration. Well, again, if you just see it, we're looking three marks here. So, one's for the formula. A equals V minus U over T. So, A, what's the final velocity? Remember, it goes the same as the alphabet. R is T, U, V, so U's before V, so U's the initial, and V is the final. So, it's 20. Take away 2 over 3. So it's 20 take away 2 is 18 over 3 is 6 meters per second squared. Can you see the units there? So we'll have to give it 1, 2, 3. Take away 2. Go on to the next question. At the bottom of the slope, the car reaches a speed of 27 meters per second and continues along a horizontal track, which a braking system is operated. The deceleration of the car is 6. Calculate the time taken to come to rest. So, A equals V minus U over T. Now you're going to have to rearrange this for me. So, you either know how to rearrange it, you do the way I've shown you, or you learn it. So, there's all the bits and pieces in. So, the initial velocity. The final velocity is not, and that's 6, so it gives you, and it's really minus 6, because if you look up there, the deceleration, the deceleration is shown as minus 6, so we really get minus 27 over minus 6. Time's a scalar, so we can't really go back in time. So let's see, going to do this sum, 27 divided by 6. 9 over 2, 4.5 seconds. Bob's your uncle. Three marks. One, rearrange it. You can't do that. Learn it and the minus for the deceleration. That's why I have the minus in there. Fair enough. Let's do the next one. John wanted to measure the density of, of rocks. He measured the mass and volume of a number and plotted the points of the graph shown below. Which of these rocks are made of the same material? Well, density, and think of the mass over volume. So, we have mass up along here, over volume. So we have mass is equal to density times volume. All I've done is rearrange the formula here. If you don't know how to rearrange it, think of the way I told you. 2 is equal to 10 over 5. So 2 times 5 is equal to 10. Or if all else fails, learn it. Now I'm going to compare this to the straight line formula. y equals mx plus c. So on my y-axis I've got mass, on my x-axis I've got volume, 
and the gradient should be the density. It's a straight line graph that goes straight to the origin because C is not. Take the trusty ruler. Those three map up in one straight line through the origin. That doesn't. And that doesn't. And that doesn't. So that's about it. Which three rocks are the same material? Well, the answer is we're looking for three marks here. Three marks. So the first one will be A, C, D. A, C, and D. Uh, all lay on same straight line. Hence, all have the same density. And that's it, three marks. Between that and that could get three marks. One of the rocks was found to have a density of 3.5. What would the mass of be if it's that? Right, so there's the grams per centimetre cubed. Centimetre cubed, which we're going to find our mass in grams. So density equals mass over vol. Remember I write down volume here, why? Uh, so don't get mixed up with velocity. Don't be silly nilly. So density times volume is equal to mass, the density is 3.5, by the volume is 4, is equal to the mass, and again, use the calculator, so it's 3.5 by 4, 14, check it again, 3.5 by 4, 14, so it's 14, Mass, and remember that's grams per centimeter cubed, and that's centimeter cubed, so the mass will be in grams. 14 grams, one mark, three range of farming. For the next question, this question is not on the current one, so we forget about that one. That's the legacy. So don't worry about that one. Man and nail gun, dangerous tool. A nail gun fires a nail of mass 5 grams. The nail gun leaves it with kinetic energy of 1 joule. Calculate the velocity now. Again, K equals mv squared over 2. You can also read it as a half by m by v squared. They're both the same thing. Joules. Kilos, meters per second. Yes. So the trick here is that's five grams, and five grams is not point not not five kilos. Divide by a thousand. So now let's go and do the sum. Kill the velocity. So ke is mv squared over 2, so V is equal to root 2KE over M. You don't know how to rearrange that, how many times that will come up, time to learn it. So it's 2 times the energy, which is 1, over the mass, not point, not, not 5. That's 2 divided by a very small number, that's going to give you a big number. And it's the root of that. So let's see, can we do that? 2 divided by 0 0.005 is the root of 400, which is 20. 20 anyway. Root comes from equals 20. 20 meters per second. Did I get my three marks? I wasn't caught by the mass. I rearranged the formula. Happy days. The nail gun is used to fix two pieces of wood together, shown in the photograph. The nail, the nail penetrates a distance of 0.05 metres. That's 5 millimetres into the wood. Calculate the average force 
the pose of the male as it penetrates into the wood. So it's work done is forced by distance. So we'll just put this over here. W equals F by S. So that's measured in joules, that's measured in newtons, and that's measured in meters. Right? So it tells me I have one joule. And the force, I don't know, there's mass to find the force. By the distance. Not point, not, not, five. So one divided by not point, not, not, five. Let's equal to the force. Get the calculator. One divided by a very wee number should be a big number. So I'm expecting a big number. One divided by point not not five. What's that again? Two hundred. Try it again. One divided by point not not five. Two hundred. It's measured in newtons. Newtons, newtons, meters, joules. Two hundred. Four marks for that. Remember, work done equals force by distance. Also, the kinetic energy comes from the energy in the gun, the conservation of energy. Let's try the next one. Electric motor is used to raise a load. Describe in detail. The apparatus could be used to measure the power. Remember, power equals energy over time. So you're going to record the time. Give you the stopwatch. That'll record the time. The energy, well, the energy this is going to get is potential energy m by g by h. So you're going to have the weight now, remember? Look, they talk about weight there. That is the weight. So, no, 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 that's potential energy. Make sure I put that in there. Potential energy is the weight by the height. So know the weight, record the height. How do you record the height? Well, it'd have to be a meter rule. And the middle rule would allow you to go the height.